Hello and welcome to the Slingshot channel. What do you get when you buy all the most hyped and most expensive bow components on the market today? Well, you get this. <laughs> the $4,000 compound bow. <laughs> Let me show you its features. Okay, I decided to go for three main hyped products that I'm trying to combine into the high-end ultimate hunting bow in the world. <laughs> Starting from the bow itself. So this is the 2020 Bowtech Realm SR6 bow. It is really hyped. People praise it for its speed. People praise it for how soft the draw is, adjustability. I mean, and it is a high-end bow. I mean, look at this cam here how lightweight it is, amazing. And the uh, workmanship is really super. I have to say, it is a very expensive bow. It set me back about 1400 euros. In Europe, these things are more expensive than in the US. Uh, but on the other hand, of course, you feel that it is high end. Then I combined it with the Fenris bow magazine made by Steambow in Austria. Very, very nice gliding on rollers, very soft. Gives you five arrows in a magazine, gives you a pump action mechanism that allows you to fire these five balls in no time. And uh, also this eliminates a ton of errors that archers normally do. Like, you know, you cannot really release this thing wrong because all you do is you press on this thing here. You cannot hold the, the bow wrong because you hold it on two ends here and here. You stabilize it really, really a lot. So a lot of the things that beginners will do wrong and that actually experienced uh, archers will have to spend months and years to learn. Uh, the Fenris all eliminates that. Plus also, I combine it with the most hype, hyped sighting system on the market, which is the Garmin Zero A1i. This is a sighting system that combines a red dot with a range finding and also angle measurement device. This means that in theory you cannot miss with this thing. You actually have this little button here that you can press and that activates these two uh, lasers here you, that you don't see but it uses them to measure the distance to your target and then it automatically adjusts the red dot for you. So in theory you should always hit with this and uh, all the guesswork uh, should come to an end. So the $4,000 archery experience. Let me show you its features. Why is it $4,000? Well it's about a thousand euros just for this here. Um, converted to dollars and uh, you're at, I don't know, 1200 or something. And uh, you have a bow that in, in Germany costs 1400 euros. I think in the US you can get it for maybe $1100 or something. And then you have the Garmin site, which is usually between $800, but uh, recommended retail price is $1000 and it's sold for 1000 euros in Germany. But of course it does contain the uh, 16 to 19 percent value added tax that we pay here in Germany. So now I'm booting up my Garmin. Actually, there is a little computer in it, obviously. And now it tells me to hold the trigger to range the bow in, which I can do at any time. Okay, so I'm now at about, I don't know, 15, 60 meters. I don't really know, it's just guessing, but the system will know. So I put this sled to the front, then I cock the bow. I set it to 60 pounds, it goes up to 70 pounds, but that's a little heavy for practice. So, and now I press the button and the thing tells me it's 16 meters. Okay, 60 meters. All right, it's very easy. Now there is a laser option for the Fenris. When I switch that on, then the laser sights come on and um, that is actually very helpful too. Of course, this does not compensate for the range. All right. Okay, seems I'm hitting better with the laser. <laughs> Okay, so that is easy. And I have to say the bow is really, really smooth. So this is clearly the coolest bow in the world. And uh, here is the link to the website where you can buy it for 4,000. No, 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 nonsense. Because sometimes when you combine exciting products, you're not getting the best deal. <laughs> you're actually getting something that is uh, subpar. And let me explain why. Okay, so first thing I have to say is the bow itself. Yes, it's a wonderful bow but it's really expensive. With both, it is a little bit like cars. You know, of course, a Ferrari is probably a better car than, let's say, a, a Volkswagen Golf, you know, or a Rabbit. <laughs> but is it 
that much better. I mean, it's really worth that kind of price difference. So you got the same here. So you can get really, really good bows starting from like $200. And for like $300, you get really good products. And of course, they're probably not made in the US, but who knows if this is really made in the US. Uh, even if they say so, it's possible that most of the components come from Asia too. That's a very common trick these days. I'm not saying that they did it. I'm just saying it, it could be the case. And then, of course, also, um, the thing is that this isn't really shooting as hard as it's supposed to because they use this IBO speed. And IBO speed is like a, a number that you will never achieve in, in the real world because it's tested without anything on it. It's tested without uh, string dampeners, it's tested without peep sights that are all weight that the string has to, has to carry. It's tested on a 30 inch draw that uh, few people have. Most people have a shorter draw length. Um, and, and so on. So uh, in reality you will get a lower reading on this. And therefore this is not so far apart from like a $300 bow that comes from out of Taiwan or from out of China. All right then, then let's talk about the Zero uh, A1i sights. I think this is a hype product and I don't really think it's, 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 it's as good as people say. At least it doesn't work really well for me. First of all I hate the weight. Because, yeah, this is actually not lightweight. It's actually kind of heavy. No wonder. I mean, there's batteries inside everything. So I think this comes down to like 800, 900 grams on something. It doesn't sound like much, but keep in mind, it comes on top of the weight of the bow. And also, the weight is actually at the very end of your arm. Actually, it's, it's protruding a little bit, as you see, right? So what happens is that, well, just take, take a beer can that isn't even as heavy as this and try to hold it steady for, let's say, a minute. You will very, very soon feel that this is comfortable drinking position. This is not. <laughs> so you don't want to do that. And therefore, I struggle with the weight because if you shoot it a lot, then it's actually, it actually tires you out, you out quickly. Then, of course, combination with the Fenris. Well, as you know, I love the Fenris. I love the concept, Lo love every bit about it, but it also adds weight. I mean, this alone is like a another kilogram or something. It's not so bad because in drawn out condition most of the weight is not right at the front but still it adds weight and you actually want to shave every gram of a of a bow that you take to a hunt or uh, for practicing in any case <laughs> seems like the tree disagrees <laughs> in any case it is still a fascinating thing and i love it and i will actually try to master it a little bit better and I love the fact that there's no more guesswork. It's like a scientific approach to distance. But on the other hand, it's a lot of money. Is it so much better than products that you can get a lot cheaper? No. Let me show you the alternative that we're actually offering for under 1100 euros complete. So here is our 1100 euro, actually 1099 euro, uh, Fenris Greyback combo. <laughs> a fantastic bow. Uh, with all the features that you possibly want for not a lot of money. Let me show you its features. I get to say this a lot in this video. <laughs> now, we actually have recommended the EK Archery Assassin, also known as Exterminator Bow, because it's a, it's a great bow and I love the product, uh, I love the company. I visited them down in Taiwan. But the bow is constantly sold out. I mean, they just can't keep making them quick enough. Very affordable bow, but great for the price. Still, we needed uh, another model, uh, also because uh, EK Archery does not make that bow in the left-hand version, so we're like, missing out on 10% of the market. Um, so we've been searching, where can we get an affordable bow that is as good or maybe even better than the EK Archery Assassin? And uh, we found one, after testing many of them, we found this model here, actually a very, very compact bow, it only has like 30 inches axle, axle to axle. And um, it is super lightweight, which is good because the Fenris adds weight. And of course, it matches the original mounting bracket. You don't need any other parts. You can simply mount it. Uh, it's also adjustable. So this one is adjustable in power. And the adjustment range is from 30 pounds to 70 pounds. So you can use this for light practice or you can use it to hunt big game. That is up on you. Of course, for practice, you don't really want to Want, to, uh, want it to be really powerful because it tires you out and it gets very hard to remove the arrows from the target. And also you can exchange the draw length because on the Fenris you typically want a shorter draw length so you can aim easily and it's, it's not as stressful. Um, and you don't really need a reference point on the Fenris. 
Yeah, and then of course I mounted the Fenris and as a sighting system, the sole sighting system that I need here. I can of course mount a red dot and I can mount a Picatinny rail here and put a scope on it, but all I need is the laser, because the laser for me is perfect. It's so bright that you can even see it on a sunny uh, day in July or June. <laughs> and um, from, the, from the distances that I'm shooting this in, this is perfect. And of course it makes this super light in comparison. Um, okay, so Fenris magazine means five shots in the, mag in the magazine. That's cool. And now if I shoot with this thing here, I have the same laser of course. Okay, and by the way the laser is in the package already. The only thing that is not in the package is this trigger holder here that's like another 50 euros or something. So you draw the bow out and of course it has a let off. I always adjust the front holder so I cannot jam, jam my finger in. But I can hold it like so and then it's like magic. I don't really need the other hand. <laughs> and what if I use both hands? It actually takes a lot of weight off me. And then I can simply aim with this bow and shoot. And shoot again. What I really love on the Fenris concept is that I don't have to take the bow out of my line of sight. I can just keep firing. Very, very, very easy. This is the quickest repeating weapon that I have ever seen uh, if it comes to muscle operated serious weapons. Even the RX Adder crossbow that I dearly love because I invented a part of it does not allow you to shoot as quickly because you have to take it off the target when you repeat it. Not so with this thing here. Now what I really love on the uh, Steambow um, Fenris is that everything is uh, so well machined. Friction is really really low as you see, almost non-existent. It uh, doesn't really eat much much energy anyhow. And um, what, I, what, I, what I really love is that it takes away all the margins of errors. So you cannot really hold this wrong. You don't have to have an anchor point, nothing like that. A beginner can shoot on the level of a real good archer in no time. So um, basically the laser and also of course the red dot, if you put it to here, gives you freedom to hold it any way you like, but the laser is unbeatable since, you know, no more holding it to your anchor point. I can actually shoot it like so. I can shoot this bow like so. So I can shoot it and Okay, that was a little shaky. Let me try this again. <laughs> I can do it in all crazy angles. Above my head, like so. <laughs> Show me another bow that you can do this with. Because if you simply put a, a laser on a normal bow, it won't work because you will always kind of twist the bow a little bit so the laser pointer changes the position but of course the arrow will hit at a completely different other place. So uh, a laser on a bow does nothing for you but it works here because you have two reference points. You're holding it always the same way here. No matter if you clean the bow a little bit, the laser is attached to this device and this is where the arrow is going, going to. Now you're going to ask me for a trick shot, uh, an over the shoulder shot. Well, let me try to put it together. I've never done it before. So I zoomed in this camera to the max. So it's aimed at the uh, target. And now I will try to see if I can really do a trick shot over my shoulder. All right, that was not so bad. Let's try again. <laughs> okay, I give up. <laughs> but I think it's pretty fun. I mean, try this with any other bow. I think you have no chance. So, the combination of the Fenris bow magazine with the Greyback bow. <laughs> its uh, introductory price is only $10.99 on our website. And you get a complete set with 10 arrows. So, not just 5, but 10 arrows. You get also get the laser sight that is made specifically for the bow. It's not just an adapted handgun uh, laser, it's developed for this thing here. And it has a custom holder that will only fit to the Fenris bow. Um, and um, yeah, you, so complete set 1099. Of course, you find the link down there. Of course, Matt in the US would also offer it, I guess, but allow like three to four weeks additional delivery time for here to, for shipping from here to, to the US. And also don't forget tariffs, transportation cost and euro dollar conversion rates <laughs> so it's going to be more expensive in the us still affordable you can still buy the fenders for a thousand this is just a hundred euros cheaper than the complete setup and then you can attach it to any other bow 
there's actually holders that also work for both that only have one mounting hole for this so it, it is very possible um, but of course this is a smoking deal <laughs> and now the great 3d designer Lukasz Janikowski uh, from Poland has actually brought out one that you can print with your 3D printer. <laughs> it's an amazing new invention of his based on my invention and he actually honors me on the product and he sent me a sample. So let me show you what Lukasz came up with. <laughs> the 3D printed instant Legolas for the EK Archery Assassin. <laughs> let me show you it's Features. <laughs> so first I have to say that this isn't entirely coming from a 3D printer. It's actually a combination of like aluminum profiles and springs and screws and so on that you can get uh, pretty much anywhere, online, offline. So there's many sources for it, but you still have to work on them. You have to cut them, you have to file them, you have to drill a lot of holes so that all these screws will just fit. So it is not for someone who has no experience in uh, home-made uh, products. Uh, but it's not too hard, I guess. Lukasz says that it's about 50 hours of printing time, which is not unusual for 3D printing. It's a very slow procedure. That's why I prefer plywood. I'm so much quicker with plywood. <laughs> and I don't have to learn complicated software. But other than that, I think he has really done a good job. And a few details, I have to say, are even better than in the expensive Fenris product. So, um, first of all, this one has a holder that is absolutely made for the EK Archery Assassin bow, which is a little bit of a pity because it's like sold out in most places. <laughs> we will get some more in, but it's going to take a few more weeks, maybe, maybe like six weeks before we get a shipment in. In any case, so the holder has the advantage that it fits like a glove on the EK Archery Assassin and there's a little play in it. And he's using three rollers where this glides and these are really ball bearings. So it's actually gliding very, very smoothly. Very little friction in this thing. It is really lightweight. It's about 500 grams, like over a pound lighter than uh, the uh, metal version, like the Fenris version. And it holds seven arrows, seven balls instead of just uh, five. So therefore, of course, plastic has advantages. Um, you can also mount a laser. There's another Picatinny rail here. Uh, I put a red dot on it because I don't have a laser for a Picatinny rail here since those are illegal in Germany, since they're made for uh, firearms. Anyway, um, the thing is, a few details he, he really solved in a clever way. Like when you want to take this out, you also have this, uh, this uh, thumb screw, just like on the Fenris. But what you have here is you can clap it open. Then you can slide the magazine out and take the entire part away and then lock it back in place. So you don't really have to remove anything from it to open or close it. I found this really, really, really clever. Also, what Lukasz did is he took the same kind of method that I use for the speed loaders on the EK Archery uh, adder crossbow. And you can press on this here and then you can swing the entire lever up, which gives you a much better access to the canal for the arrows. So you can close this again. And that is very smart because it allows you to use a speed loader. So let's empty this magazine. So I can show you how the speed loader works. And and you can't shoot it on an empty bow because the lever catches like it should. So these are the speed loaders that he invented that are also 3D printed. Um, they work like just much uh, the, like the speed loaders I designed for the EK Archery adder, but he used a little bit more complicated method and also he has more play in it and that probably has to do with the 3D printing. So it's, it's rattling a little bit and that is the reason why I don't really th think that speed loaders for such long arrows are a good idea. Since, you know, it's getting kind of clumsy and there's always a danger that they will fall out. But it's still very, very, very cool. So how do you load it? Well, first of all, you press on this button here and this allows you to swing up the arm then you take the speed loader with your bolts you put them in they automatically knock in here and I move this backwards and automatically the bolts are in you close it and I have another seven bolts and I think with a little practice it will be super easy to do this just in a standing position while firing and you of course also have this little clamp so you can put it on your belt like a few of them. 
of course you don't have a rangefinder. So what do you do when you have different distances? Well, with a little practice, you know how your arrows will be dropping. So it's very simple. You use a technique that's called holding over. <laughs> so the more far you're away, you hold a little bit over and you can quickly learn this. It's very easy practice. Let me show you how I do it. Okay, I will now go to the 10 meter mark and do a shot and then go six steps further back and then do another one and another one and another one until I'm right here. <laughs> and then we'll see how I'm going to be hitting. Okay, I got one left. Let me see if I'm going to hit. <laughs> seems like. I think I missed one. So, it seems to me that I have to adjust my uh, aim a little bit to the left. But, I mean, these are five of these shots. One is still on the target and only one landed down here. In the catch box. Okay. So. But as you see, it's not so hard. I haven't practiced this a whole lot, but you see, it's not so hard. Once you know how your bow reacts, then it's not very complicated. And it saves you a thousand dollars. How expensive is it to make it? I don't know. I mean, you need the bow, which is probably 200 euros. And then I think you need parts. So I'm guessing you come out between maybe 350 to, depending on where you buy it, maybe 500 euros for this thing, which is, uh, a lot less expensive than all the other options on the market but keep in mind you also have to invest a lot of work so advantages of this thing clearly it's the lightest in the field and that is a lot of fun the second uh, it's much less expensive it's also really important third it is the only one that gives you a speed loader option uh, fourth it uses off-the-shelf bolts and not special bolts like customized bolts um, so, uh, so this is also great and also it has a few technical gimmicks like this uh, very easy removal system that I also absolutely dig <laughs> and um, it also has disadvantages. What are the disadvantages? Well first of all again you can only make this by yourself if you are talented and experienced in homemade projects otherwise it's not going to come out as nice. You can probably manage but it won't be the same I think. So if you have experience with these things no problem otherwise yeah you probably have to practice a little. Second, it is plastic. This means it's lightweight, but it's also not as solid as aluminum. One of the reasons why Steambow went for this machined aluminum, because it is absolutely solid. And because as you, for example, can see, yes, the roller bearings is nice, but if you can't it a little bit, then you can see that some of these, these things won't even turn anymore because there is play, since simply it works a little bit. Plastic just isn't as, 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 uh, uh, stable as stiff as the uh, aluminum is so that's clearly a disadvantage but it is not really a problem uh, uh, what other disadvantages do you have well it's not as cool looking even though it carries my name let me show this to you very proud about this but still of course it lacks the coolness of the sleek steambow design another big disadvantage is the fact that this currently only works for the ek archery assassin or exterminator bow which is a good bow, but it's simply not available on the market at the moment. I think we bought all the parts that we could find in Europe and Matt did the same in North America, I guess. So this is a, a big disadvantage, but I believe that Lukas will soon also offer uh, mounting rails, uh, mounting brackets for other bows. Oh, and of course I put the link to uh, Lukas uh, download site here. It's uh, legolini.com. But this time, Lukas is asking for a small donation for the, uh, the, for the plants and for the files. He's asking $12, which I think is a major steal. I think everybody should give him a little tip extra. 
very, very, very cool. And I'm super excited that my invention now is available in the form of a 3D printable thing so that everybody can own one. Okay, now the Greyback and Fenris combination product. Great value for the money, 1,099 euros for the complete set, I think is not expensive at all. Uh, very lightweight, a little heavier than the plastic one, but much more solid since it's machined aluminum, CNC machined alu aluminum, you get a ton of value for your money. Great adjustability, uh, all the way from 30 pounds to 70 pounds, makes it really interesting. Uh, small size, very compact, also easy to take apart, even though you don't have this clap up function here and better arrows. Let me show you the difference in the arrows. So this is the EK Archery arrow and this is the Fenris arrow. Both of course can be outfitted with, uh, because they got removable tips, but both can be outfitted with uh, 2D broadheads and I think Steambow even has a, uh, a collapsing uh, three-bladed uh, broadhead, like an expanding broadhead uh, in the program. So therefore this clearly is the more sophisticated one you also see that they have, let me see if this focuses. Okay, you see that they have this little notch in here. And this means in the Fenris, they are actually held also to both sides. So once in the magazine, it can't fall to the front or to the rear side because it's pinched in here. Therefore, um, this, of course, is, is all made for precision. I'm not saying that this is unprecise, but this, of course, uh, is just a, a fully industrial version of a super cool weapon. Another advantage is that the, actually the mounting bracket that comes with it is completely adjustable, so you can adjust it in any way. So it accommodates a lot of different bows and there's even one that attaches to the attachment points for the, uh, for the aiming system, for the sights, so that you can attach to bows that only have one mounting hole instead of two for the arrow rest. And uh, therefore, uh, this comes with slotted, slotted mounting positions all the way. Therefore, I think you can mount it to a ton of bows. As you see, I was able to attach it to the uh, Bowtech, even though I had to work a little bit. I'll uh, come to that later. So, the most expensive bow in the world. <laughs> Combination of the Bowtech, Realm SR6, the Fenris Bow Magazine, and uh, the uh, Garmin Zero. A1i uh, range finding sighting system. As cool as it looks, and it is cool, I mean all the components are super cool, but it doesn't really work for me. It is too heavy. Um, operation of the Garmin is a little bit too complicated for me. It's not very intuitive. You have to switch it on and off and adjust it and do all kinds of things. But also, it doesn't really bring the accuracy for me. For some reason, I'm sure I'm doing something wrong here, folks. I'm sure that if I'm doing something wrong, and you will probably tell me in the comments what I'm doing wrong, but for me, I can't really get consistent uh, uh, hits with it. Uh, somehow, I think uh, the way how I look through this thing changes and then the entire uh, hitting point changes with it. So I, I don't really get this. So again, I'm not saying it's a bad product. I'm just saying for me, it doesn't work. And also definitely the weight is a problem. Uh, other than that, very cool bow, <laughs> very cool idea, I think. I also have to have to say that I had to work on this a little bit. First of all, it was fitting with the original uh, mounting brackets here, but as you see I had to replace the original cable holder with the cable guides here Since the original one was some kind of a, a Carbon spring or something and it was too low. It was getting into in the way with the uh, with the mounting bracket Therefore I had to use a little bit of steel and make my own that puts the cable gliders a little bit above um, the rail and the bow is actually shooting fine with the laser are getting excellent results, just not with the uh, Garmin. So, I hope you like this. I'm going to do five quick shots for you just to say thanks and bye-bye. <laughs> Here we go. Bye-bye, um. <laughs> folks.